Listen, everybody, Caitlin Clark. She has helped draw millions of new fans to women's basketball during her record-breaking college career. And she's the NCAA's all-time scoring leader. And it is no surprise that she was drafted number one recently in the WNBA draft. But what's got everybody talking is her first-year salary with the Indiana Fever. She's the biggest star in women's college, ball, and guess what she's making her first year, everybody? A whopping $76,000 a year. Wow. Yeah. In, mm. in case you're wanting to do math, and I don't do math, but our writers <laughs> did this math, Zero. that is 0.76% of her NBA counterparts. <laughs> She didn't even make the 1% cut. It is being compared to what a department store manager in Indianapolis makes. Yeah. Uh, so, Riley, listen, women's sports, women's basketball having a huge moment. What do you make of the disparity between who she is and how much she's making? Oh, my gosh. It's ridiculous, right? Like, I, I feel like I'm disappointed but not surprised. Yeah. Mm. Um, because the thing is, this story, it should be and is the jumping off point to talk about how we need to fund women's sports better. Because Caitlin Clark, she's be okay. She's got brand deals. She's working with Nike. You know, she as an individual will be fine. Yeah. But there are dozens and hundreds and thousands of not Caitlin Clarks yeah. that aren't getting that. And we also, for a long time, the argument has been that like, well, people won't watch it. And I'm like, the NCAA yeah. mm -hmm. semifinals and finals were the most watched, the yeah. women's. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sports bars in Toronto, in Oregon, in the States that are just dedicated to women's sports, they're constantly packed. Mm -hmm. The demand is there. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that they won't show them on the major channels and at the good times. They don't fund them and train them so that you get higher, even higher levels of gameplay. Mm -hmm. um, so the problem really is with the industry, in my mind, as opposed to, say, the athletes themselves or even the consumers. Yeah. I totally agree. I was shocked, you know, that ticker, ticker, sticker price shock. You're like, yeah. <gasps> yeah. but then, yeah. like, it does does kind of make sense from a mathematical point of view if you compare the WNBA and the NBA, their revenue. The NBA's revenue is $10 billion. And the WNBA, NBA, which uh, is 50 years uh, younger mm -hmm. than the N NBA, is 20 million, 200 million. So that's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, but the big difference for me also seems to be in the unions. The NBA mm -hmm. union has just done a way better job of getting more money of the revenue into the players' hands. Mm -hmm. And the WNBA has not yet. They set this target goal. And if they get over the target, then the players will make money. The problem is they've never made that target. Mm -hmm. So things have to shift. And I do think it will take time and that will grow on the investment stuff. Mm. You have to invest, mm -hmm. which yeah. I can't wait to compare to our budget talk yeah. later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, when I first heard the story, and I, um, it's interesting because I want to piggyback off that idea of this shift because I think that we're all going to learn that it's within us to help those women make more money because the problem's always been, they say, oh, the people aren't watching, people aren't watching. And as you just said, the numbers are there, we're watching. So now we're going to use our social media to say, hey, we want to see more WNBA games on our television. Yeah. Oh, we're not watching. Yeah. Because the more eyeballs, the more people, and when we have an, if you have a WNBA team in your city, buy tickets and go to the game. If you are incensed by how little these women are making, mm -hmm. buy a ticket, take your family, and everybody support. And when they have more eyeballs and more butts and seats, guess what? Everybody makes more money. And I think the, the interesting thing is, I love this transparency because we're so accustomed to talking about wage gap, and I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, wage gap, wage gap. But then when you see it, when you see yeah. someone who's at the top of their game and then you hear that they're making this little pittance of money, meanwhile, you'll hear about some, like, that Shohei Otani, the guy who just signed with the Dodgers, 10-year deal for $700 million. I'm not expecting women to make that much, but I was never expecting any top female athlete to, to make, make that so little. So little. Little. So, so little. But if you build it, they will come. It's a young franchise. Like, I think it's not even... It's already built. The stadiums are there. The teams are there. If we demand it, they mm. will pay. Yeah. If they demand... If we demand... Listen, yeah. put it on television. Supply and demand. Let me know when the games are happening and we support. We help those women. Yes. I, I, I love, love everything that everybody's saying here because I think, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say anything new, but I right away when I saw $76,000 and I was like, this is pathetic um, and she's going to be fine. But I do think of another player who's very similar to her and that was Steph Curry, is Steph Curry. And we all know that name. And in his rookie year, I think he made $2.9 million <laughs> his rookie year. And she was so good that she appeared alongside him at the NBA All-Star game recently. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, almost beat him in the three-pointer shootout. And she's beating his stats. 
right? Yeah. She's yeah. beating his staff. She's she's not beating and, you know, money. and I know that it's not apples to apples yeah. yet, to your point, because it's 48 years younger and they're behind. But when I think that if she's good enough to bring in those ratings next to Steph Curry yeah. and $76,000 is the starting rookie salary, and I think at the top end, the top players in the WNBA are not even cracking $250,000 a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, there is such a disparity. And to your point, Andrea, if Toronto, if the rumors are true and they're looking at building a WNBA team here, I will be the first one outside with all my signs saying, buy tickets now. Yeah. 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 Let's support yeah. the women. Yeah. We need to support. Hey there, what did you think? Drop your comments below and join the conversation. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find more on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. See you soon.